had his eye on him all whole way and he brought him down after a pickup of about four yards. Well, he gets back uh, to the original line of scrimmage plus one. Only three penalties for Oregon State in this half, nine for for Oregon. But look at Ken Simonson. Over 1,000 yards his first three years, 49 career touchdown, leads the Pac-10 in yards per game. He's eighth in the nation. Everything you want a running back, except for the size. He's only 5'7", 194 pounds, but he's got that low center of gravity. Only a junior. He said yesterday he will be back next season. Jonathan Smith, who's also a junior, goes down the middle of the field. Defensive play by Steve Smith saves a touchdown. Hushman Zada had separated and was on his way, but the ball was slapped away by Smith. I think Smith was just baiting him. He knew his speed, and he knew he was going to make a break on the ball. I'm surprised he didn't try to go for the pick. He just got the right hand up there enough to knock it away. Zada just ran that deep post. Good play by Smith. Now if he's baiting him, he's, he's uh, I don't want him to knock up there, but I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Smith throwing behind the intended receiver on this play, and again, it's Bushman Zada. <laughs> PJ. You ought to know how to pronounce his name, he'll tell you. And it's not a bad idea to ask him. Because there's a lot of letters in it. Fessler to punt. Lowry waiting. Minute 58 to go in the first half. Good punt. Beauty by Fessler. All the way back to the 12 yard line. Howie looking for some daylight. He's taken down at the 13 yard line. Great open field tackle by Terrence Gray. So the Ducks will get the ball back at the 13-yard line with a minute and 47 seconds to play in the first half and trailing 17 to 7. Beautiful sight. What a perfect day for football. 32 degrees when we kicked off this afternoon. This is Tomlinson, two yards to the 15. Dwan Edwards, Edwards, who's a young guy, just reading that thing, fighting his block, making the tackle. These guys are huge. You know that? Talk about they're young. 6'3", 270 pounds, and he's one of the smaller guys up front. Comes from Columbus, Harrington. No, hit the ground. Court Hopkins. Keenan yeah. Howard. Keith, that breaks his streak. He had hit nine in a row. Throws that one a little bit short. And Howard had to short hop it. But Harrington really in a rhythm now. Time just about gone in the first half. Good. Let's see it right here before Howie comes up. Howie covers it up pretty nicely, though, and tries to get his hands under it. But you can see it's short hop and skip. Josh Lyon comes out now. That'll get another wide receiver into the ball game. Amundsen is the single back. Throw it underneath to Amundsen, and a solid tackle by James Allen. James Allen, who had so much trouble with his back, back spasms all summer and going into the season, finally got some acupuncture, and it straightened him out. Got a flag down. Probably uh, get a sportsman-like call, unsportsmanlike call on it for celebrating. Keith, you're talking about Allen. What a game he's having. That's his fifth tackle this, this afternoon already in the first half. Just flying around. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike, defense, 15 yard penalty. That gets a growl out of the Beaver home folks. It was fourth down and eight, so that's going to give them a first down, obviously. 
It does not please the man in the black hat. And it really shouldn't, and I'll tell you why. Because you've got a quarterback with a hot hand and 55 seconds to play in the half. This, this crew, I told you way back at the beginning of the ball game, this crew throws a lot of flags. Well, in a game like this, too, that'll warrant the, the officials to, to they'll look at it. They'll try to maintain control in the ball game. They'll, yep. they'll do it gonna, with the flags. I'm not going to let you show off at all. No. You're going to play it right down to the letter. Ball is on the 29. 55 seconds. Oregon has two timeouts and the quarterback with a hot hand. They've got to utilize the sidelines. Goes in the middle, and the ball is knocked out of the hand of uh, Justin Field, the tight end. Darnell Robinson, number five, the man that laid the lick on Boy, Howard was on the outside, too, up by the 30-yard line, and he just puts his hands up in the air to Harrington and says, hey, what are you looking at? I was wide open. Look at the total yards this, this first half. Oregon, 172, or this quarter, rather, 24 plays and 172 yards. And remember, he had that streak of nine straight completions. Oregon State owned the first quarter. Next to second. And 51 seconds. Thrown underneath. And Amundsen falls down. And he had a little blocking help. He might have been, been able to make something out of that. But he couldn't keep his balance. And the clock was running along at 35 seconds. Well, Harrington thought it was set up perfectly. And he says, come on, we've got to keep our feet. Clock continues to run down to 20 seconds. And I guess they're just going to let it go and go to the clubhouse and talk about things and hope that they can still find that magic that served them so well in the second half through the last half of the season. This could be your last play. They stay it on the ground. And that will do it. As we run out of time in the first half of play with Oregon State leading Oregon by a score of 17 to 7. ABC. Six by Cookus, and here come the Beavs. Jonathan Smith started five of six. Robert Prescott, two first quarter touchdowns, including that one. But down by 17 points, Harrington gets hot. Nine straight completions. This one to Marshawn Tucker for 33 yards. That sets up Harrington's quarterback draw. Ten-point game, and that's where we are, 17-7. to seven. Oregon Stanley, Dean Witter, halftime stats. Keith, you watch this game and you think Oregon State is dominating, but if you look at the statistics, here we go. Rushing yards, 103. Morris has 84 of those. Passing yards, Harrington hit nine in a row. And then total yards, 260. So Oregon not playing that badly, although Oregon State leads by 10. And what they have done, they have shut down Oregon State's Ken Simonson. Well, they really have. He had uh, eight carries for 10 yards. You look to see what they did on first downs. You look at third down conversions. You look at time of possessions. And that's the way Oregon plays. They just got to stay now with their game plan and still continue to believe the Rose Bowl is within reach. All they have to do to go to the Rose Bowl and win the conference championship is win this ball game. Dan Katz will kick it off for the Ducks. Prescott and Walker waiting for the Beavers. The kick is a little short. Up at the 12-yard line, it's Prescott. Prescott has two Oregon State touchdowns today. And again, there is a penalty flag on the field. It's penalty, penalty, penalty throughout that entire first half. And one of the mysteries is to whether or not Joey Harrington can find that magic that has made the season for the Oregon Ducks. Well, the thing about Harrington is the fact that he's very, very mature, and he got off to a slow start, and yet he hung in there. He stayed in the game plan. He hit nine in a row, and all of a sudden they came roaring back. So he's a mature guy. He's, he's into that rhythm now. Well, Oregon State has just hit with a holding call here, which takes away the good field position that Prescott had given them with that return. So a little bit off, not quite in sync. Oregon with 10 penalties already in this ball game. They cannot afford to do that and go to the Rose Bowl. So we go now to the second half of play. Dennis Erickson. Oregon State coach Mike Bellotti, the Oregon coach. Bellotti won the ball game a year ago. Here's Jonathan Smith throwing behind the man. He had Prescott open and just threw a bad pass. Threw it behind him. Well, Smith started five for six in this game, 142 yards and two touchdowns. But since then, Keith, he's one of eight. And minus one yard, he just 
has lost the rhythm. Ball is on the 15-yard line after that holding penalty. And that's where the Beavers are working from right now. Second down and 10. This is Simonton. He gets around the corner. That's the explosiveness that he brings to the ball game. He did very little in the first half, but he just turned into a bolt of lightning and went to the 40-yard line on the first down. Webster and Smith made the tackle. The first time he's looked like himself today. Take another look at it. He's short. He's fast. He's got great balance because he's got that low center of gravity. And look at the way he takes this corner. He just can cut and make that 90-degree turn. All-time leading rusher at OSU, and that time he looked like it. Ten yards in the first half, just picked up 25 on that one run. Oregon trying to go off the snap. Simonson ducks over the right side and moving behind Cornell and White. Picks up about three yards. He's a great running back. Never give their body, their full body, to the tackler. You've got two running backs in this game alone that are perfect at that. And that's Morris and Simonson. They just never, ever give up their full body. He uh, was recruited here to Oregon State by Mike Riley, who's now in San Diego. Came out of Pittsburgh, California. Second down and seven. Simonton again and finding daylight over the right side. Almost popped it out of there. He'll be a yard short of his first down. Here's Todd Harris. Well, Keith, I talked with both coaches at halftime. Obviously, Mike Velotti said, we've got to stop the turnovers, hold on to the ball. And he was very upset about the penalties. He said, this is completely uncharacteristic of our Oregon team. Mike, on the other side, though Dennis Erickson was not happy about that late penalty they got before the second half. He said, that was just terrible and excusable. He says, his kids know there's still a full half to play. They lead 17-7. Uh, to seven. It's third down and one for Oregon State. Momentum going into the clubhouse belonged to Oregon, and uh, the Ducks just stuck Simonson. Saul Patu met him right in the middle, and he is short of the first down, and the Beavers are going to have to punt it. Well, Dennis Erickson knows to win this ball game, he's going to have to keep Joey Harrington and Maurice Morris off the field. That's the first down he felt like he could get, felt like he should have gotten, and there they are, less than a, well, actually less than a foot from the first down marker, and they have to punt. Festival's kick is away, and it's a beauty. It's into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 where the Ducks will have it first down. And their first possession of the second half. It'll be interesting to see if old momentum is still wearing white. Supercross series this month on ESPN Extra. The games will come to an end this weekend, but that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day, on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station. Getting the hit, a good job by Williams just get that thing out of the end zone. I think they should throw a. Outside pressure with a blitz. Ooh. That was close. I think I thought they should have thrown a pass, but I was thinking more. By Kenny May.
The Oregon Ducks have the football now. First down at their own 20-yard line. And uh, standing on the sideline, there didn't seem to be all that much conversation. Here are the numbers on Joey Harrington so far in the ball game. But remember, the, the second half has been his party time over the last six weeks. And the ball to Maurice Morris, running in traffic. And he's up to about the 22-yard line. Oregon is in a posture of ad adversity right now, and uh, in the course of conversation with Joey Harrington this week, he said this to Todd Harris about having to come from behind. We play well when our backs are to the wall. We know how to come back. We know how to fight. We know how to scrap. And uh, I think that worked for us very well this year because not everything's gone right. You're right, Joey. It hasn't. Well, he's hit his last 12 from, of 15 passing so it looks like he finally is getting into the ball game Keith. second down and eight from the 22 passes oh my goodness he's lucky to get that one back intended for Harry I mean there were two Jake Cookers almost had the ball in his bread basket just didn't hold it well they play the safeties up in the box a lot but here they read this and look at this, from the go, here comes the safety up and almost makes the pick. And I'll tell you what, Cook has almost had his third interception. Carroll and Cook is playing really strong at safety today. Third down, and the Beaver defense asks for some help from the drive. Play clock's down to five. go just barely got it away in time to the sideline it's a good catch up at the 32 yard line and good for a first down Marshawn Tucker out of El Centro California Tucker has stepped up here in the closing part of the season made a lot of big plays watch his feet this is great concentration he's dragging his feet awfully close but the lines line judge is right there and says yep he had that foot in Put it on the 33 officially because it's right between the two hash marks when you always take the forward one. First down for the Ducks. They take it and stick in the end zone. We've got a real war working. It is Maurice Morris, and they've got him at just about the line of scrimmage. This defense for Oregon State has been the difference today. You can call it the attack of the killer beeves. You look at the passing chart, here's Joey Harrington. Almost everything he's thrown has been to the right side. Look at this, nine for nine right here has been his hot spot. Here's two for eight up here. But he's looking to the right. Two for three down the middle up top, three for five right there, zero to ten in the middle. But there's a strong tendency to look at the middle to the right. That's where Harrington's going. It's second down and still about ten. This is Morris looking to the outside. Nothing there. He wanted to come back this way, but there was Ladarius Jackson and DeLawrence Grant. And Grant, number one, is a pretty good-sized roadblock. Say those two tight, those two defensive ends are as good as you get. Grant with six sacks, 11 tackles for losses. Ladarius Jackson, 19 tackles for losses, nine and a half sacks. Both guys 6'3", both guys right around 260 pounds. He's got great speed. Good players with bad intentions. Craig Gray, the defensive coordinator for Oregon State, indicated there would be a time in this ball game when they would line up together. Shoulder to shoulder. He's not going to get it off, Keith. Well, play late coming in from the sidelines, and Joey is upset about it. But uh, they have to spend the time out. 10.09 to go in the third quarter. We always say kids start using drugs because of peer pressure. Maybe we should start thinking about parent pressure. Talk to your kids. Let them know how you feel. Talk. Listen. Stay involved. It's about velocity, aerodynamics, gravity, kinetic energy, friction. It's about sports. It's ESPN Sports Figures. You can score points in school by learning math and physics through the dynamics of sports. ESPN Sports Figures. Put your brain in the game.
Inspector Shanahan knew he was close. 13 years in the game, battles in the corners, big game goals, raising two cups. He saw things so clearly now. He stuck to the clues and followed the tracks of the skate blades right to the scene. He pointed towards his suspect. For it was the goalie who did it all along. This game is huge. This game is absolutely huge. I really don't like them, and I, I don't know why. There's going to be a lot of fighting going on. It's going to be a, it's going to be a war. Oh, it's a nasty game. Right now, Oregon State holds a 10-point lead over Oregon in the Civil War. Aria or Marshawn Tucker started too soon, and it's a penalty, Oregon. That'll be 11 on the Ducks in the ball game. Wow. That's unbelievable. No play. Dead ball. Full start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Thanksgiving Friday, ABC Sports with a college football doubleheader. We'll start it at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time, Colorado and Nebraska. And then at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, we offer you Texas A&M and Texas here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Mike Bellotti made a good point when he said it's uncharacteristic for the Ducks to have all those penalties. This has been a, a team really that has been pretty good about making mistakes. They haven't made many this year. 76 in the course of the season. This is Amundsen carrying the ball, and he gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. It was third and 17 on that play. And now here comes the punting team onto the field. And going back under the ball. T.J. Hushmand, Hushmandzada. He holds the record for the Pac-10 for the that, most letters in his name. That name kept me awake two nights last week. <laughs> Hushmandzada. <laughs> On fourth and eight. Once away by Curtis Gore, and it's not one of his better ones. It's bounding around at about the 40-yard line. So Oregon State will have it at the 41. That is very good field position for Oregon State after a 24-yard punt. ESPN the Magazine. Stuart Scott wants fleece. Booyah! Stuart, only brand new subscribers get the free fleece. Everyone wants our warm, roomy fleece pullover. It's free with your paid subscription to ESPN the Magazine. Maybe you want to take out another subscription. Call now for ESPN the Magazine. Get 26 issues, a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. And your fleece pullover is free. 1-800-979-8998. As an anchor, you always want that complete show. And coming up, a did you know about sports. So, Ken, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Never better. I'm, I'm great. I can go. Just let me finish, like that. You'll get them next show. Sometimes you don't have your best stuff, so you got to bring in a closer. We usually handle it like professionals. Thanks a lot. It's all part of the game. You're on. Three, two. Welcome back to Sports Center. The subject rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. A E I O. They just record you saying the alphabet, moving your face around, and then whenever the boys in R and D want to put you in one of those new ESPN video games, they have everything they need. Yeah, but that would mean they could make us do whatever they want. <laughs>
the attendance for this 104th meeting between Oregon and Oregon State, 36,044. Reese Stadium on the campus of OSU. Jonathan Smith turns and hands to Ken Simonton. And he fights for a couple of yards on the play. And we're off to Times Square Stadium in New York City. And John Saunders. He's the Burger King update. Indiana, Purdue. As you know, Purdue win this one. They're in the Rose Bowl. Montreal low from six yards out. The lead is now opened up to 27 to 7. Perhaps awaiting the winner of your game, Keith. And if the Oregon Ducks can win this game, they will play Purdue, apparently, in the Rose Bowl. And they would, they would, uh, I would be startled if uh, they were elevated much higher in the BCS. Pass is complete to Maurer, and he tiptoes down the sidelines for a big play and a first down for Oregon State. The Beavers haven't made a lot of noise lately, offensively, but now they seem to be moving the ball. Every quarterback has some guy that he wants to know where he is on every play. Here he goes to the big tight end. Watch Bauer's agility. He almost jumped over top of Smith. He just barely got to his legs and almost caught his balance before he stepped out of bounds and then fell. This is time for him. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage by a little bit. I asked Jonathan Smith in conversation who in this Oregon secondary or who on that defense does he want to know on every play exactly where he is and he answered this. Probably Rashard Bowman, number 17. Uh, he's uh, definitely a quality corner and he's made a lot of plays for him and so uh, I'll, I'll know who he's matched up with each, each time we snap the ball. Jonathan Smith who came here walked on as a freshman from Glendora, California. Worked his way through the scout team, and he's 18 and 7 in his start coming into the ball game today. He throws a bullet to Maurer, the big tight end, takes it down to the 30-yard line, and it appears to be another Beaver first down. Using that size of Maurer, he's 6'5", 245 pounds. This time they just got him across the middle. High percentage dink and dunk type pass, trying to get Smith back into some kind of rhythm. He's really gotten out. He was, uh, started five for six, then he went one for eight. But he's hit his last two now with short passes. 7.45 to go in the third quarter. 17 to 7, Oregon State by 10. Washington is playing Washington State in Pullman tonight or this afternoon. And there's another pass drilled to Robert Kutzka, the slot guy. And he'll be down around the 20-yard line and close to another first down for Oregon State. And it is. Now time for the Aflac trivia question. This week's question, when the last time a team from California did not finish among the top three in the final conference standing. If we can find it, we'll give you the answer in a little while. He was looking for Bowman. He said that's the guy he wants to, to look at. Bowman, really, they haven't thrown his direction yet. Westcott catching his fifth ball there for 95 yards. He has two touchdowns. Simonton's outside. He scores. Ken Simonton with that great vision and those great feet. He got a crack and he made the most of it. his 50th career touchdown all rushing give sandoval and sykes and gibson a lot of credit they pulled out of there and came around almost like the counter tray the redskins used to run watch the left side of the line now everybody start going this way all right now they get out in front of him now look the patience to wait for the blocks and now the explosion and the cutback in the score and the kick is no good jerked it left Seska misses the extra point, breaks his string. He had 80 in a row, and he just missed number 81. It's 23-7, Oregon State. Love college hoops? Live for the sweet slam dunk? Three-point plays? Get a ticket to basketball heaven. Order ESPN's pay-per-view full court, and you'll get over 450 extra games. The top schools, the biggest conferences, all the action you can handle. 23-7, Seska missing his 81st extra point try. Makes it 23-7, and when you see that happen, 
You wonder if it'll come back to haunt him. High drifting kick taken at the eight yard line by Amundsen. And Amundsen back to about the 25. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee with legendary off road capability. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Sears and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. And Burger King got the urge. Here's a colorful gathering today. Sure is. Look around the countryside. It's equally colorful. There's Ryan Suska. I read a, I think it was Don Meehan uh, in the uh, old running the other day. Where I had a line writing about face pictures. He said, a little dose of amnesia is handy to hand in uh, the stressful life of a place picker. This is Marshawn Tucker for the Oregon Ducks on a pass from Joey Harrington getting first down yardage up to the 48-yard line. That amnesia is needed for defensive backs as well. They've got a two-deep five under. They just bring him all the way across. Tucker all the way across the field trying to find the open space in the zone. Does. There's the ball waiting for him and a big pickup. Again, no panic in Joey Harrington. Tucker and Howery are very good receivers. Tucker the speed guy. Howery a technician. Runs great routes. Also has the big tight end peel and the running back mark. All the tools. They just have to get it going. This is Morris, and he's out of bounds, right about the marker, too. So he's got a pretty good spot on that, baby, and he's got a first down. Excellent ball carrier, solid pass catcher, not the greatest blocker. He's 6 feet, 205 pounds, junior college transfer, but what a difference he's made in this Oregon team this year. The big question mark coming in was running back. They knew they were solid everywhere else. And here they sit, number five, nine and one, and looking to go to the Rose Bowl if they can just get a win today. Last time Oregon was there was against that great 1994 Penn State team. They lost, but they put up a heck of a fight. Ball is touched down the field, intended for Josh Line. A good defensive play by James Allen. Well, I have to tell you, James Allen is playing the best game of his career today. He had five tackles in the first half. Here he's got terrific coverage. The linebacker's matched up with the fullback, and he's got inside coverage. He's using the outside line, the out-of-bounds line, as, a, as another defender. He's kind of got him squashed in there and just played it very, very well, running in his hip pocket and knocking it down. Ball sits just short of the 41-yard line on the Oregon State side of the field. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. It's second down and ten for the Ducks. Harrington's pass. Oh, and it and intercepted. Caught by Richard Siegler, the redshirt freshman middle linebacker. You talk about an athletic play by Siegler. The ball was tipped at the line. He readjusted totally and goes in the opposite direction to make the pick. 204 pound redshirt freshman and made a play like an NFLer. Harrington's a tall receiver at 6'4, should not have passes batted. There it is hit, and it's hit by O'Neill. But look at the adjustment by Sigler to make that interception. Terrific play. Wow. Boy, he's really played well. As we said earlier, unexpected, I think, for the, the coaches. Craig Gray were telling us that they didn't think that Siegler was going to be as good as he's become, but he has. Timeout called by Oregon State. That's three picks on Harrington today. At 6.15 to go in the third quarter. 23-7, timeout up, what's up, what's up? Okay, what's up to the pop? It's to all the fathers in America. Love college hoops? Live for the sweet slam dunks, three-point plays? Get a ticket to basketball heaven. Order ESPN's pay-per-view full court, and you'll get over 450 extra games. The top schools, the biggest conferences, all the action you can handle. ESPN full court, maximum college basketball. To order, call your cable company, Direct TV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Now, Unitas winds up throwing the only touchdown pass in the game. It's a pass right off of Eddie Hinton's fingers. Winds up bouncing off of Mel Renfro's chest. Then John... Just answer the question. Super Bowl five. Correct. Roll again. 
Jimmy Smith and the Jaguars look to contain Jerome Bettis and put the brakes on the Steelers' drive to the postseason. The Jaguars face the Steelers at 8.30 on ESPN Sunday Night Football. It's football after dark. You better come to work. You drop a pass, you run a mile. Run every one you miss a block, you run a mile. You fumble the football, and I will break my foot off in your... And then you will run a mile. You will be perfect. Perfection. Lose a game, they'll fire you. You must be outside your mind. I'm a winner. Victory! Show me, show me! I come to win. Remember the Titans. Rated PG. Now playing. The Aflac trivia question we have posed for you. When was the last time a team from California did not finish among the top three in the final conference standing? Answer is 1941 in the top three, Oregon State, Washington, and Washington State. The north, northern end of the conference is dominating this year, and they may be kind of hard to move out, too, for a few years. And off goes to McCall, Patrick McCall, 196-pounder. And he's in there for about five yards. The Pac-10 standings, Washington. Uh, if Oregon State wins this game today, it falls into a three-way tie if Washington wins in Pullman. And there's no certainty they will because the Cougars are kind of hard to handle, it seems, over there for the Huskies in Pullman. But if it goes into a three-way tie, then Washington on tiebreakers will go to the Rose Bowl because they were the one team that beat Oregon State 33 50. It is second down and uh, long two. McCall jumping over the stack. Patrick McCall, the ball carrier. on the field. He stopped at about the 45 yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Of course, as we looked at those standings, keep UCLA was hoping that Oregon would win today and that Washington would win tonight. UCLA looking at either the Aloha Bowl, perhaps the Sun Bowl. Holiday Bowl in, in uh, San Diego supposedly will get the number two team, but if you have a three-way tie, then they're in for some choices. And John Reed said the other day he might be very interested in Oregon State because either team will empty the state of Oregon during the holidays, I suspect. If they both go to a bowl, I don't I wouldn't come up here. Holy be anybody around. offense. <laughs> Penalty enforced from the previous spot. Ten yards. Repeat second down. So the Beavers hammer themselves with the holding call. That's a 10-yard penalty. This is where they've got to go, that bright yellow line. You see it's up there three yards short of midfield. First and 10 presented by Quest. Now after the penalty, it's second down and 13 in the 10-yard penalty. Jonathan Smith pumps, throws, sideline, man there. Pushmanzada makes the catch. That's his first on the day. First on the day, but what a great year he's having. Last year he had that back problem. Now he's flying around. He's making blocks downfield. He's making catches. This is just a down and out, but it's a perfect route. Now watch when he goes out. There's the ball waiting for him. Bam! Right between the one and the eight as he steps out of bounds. Jonathan Smith, perfect pass and an outstanding route by Kushmanzada. 48-yard line. It's McCall bouncing outside. Patrick McCall is a little faster than Ken Simonton, so he creates a different angle for the defense to worry about. Simonton, on the other hand, may be a little quicker and have uh, better vision and quicker feet, but McCall, who came here from Michigan, transferring because there was a platoon of running backs at Michigan at the time, and he didn't want to sit around forever and a day and wait. Well, let's think about McCall, and he played the road ball already. He hits the seam. He's gone. You mentioned more explosive than Simon, because I don't think there's any question about that. It's a great way to explain it, because he can just disappear. Second down, long four. Patrick McCall on the carry. He's not 
going to get his first down on that play. You, you think that there might be some feeling between the two running backs, but Simonton says no. He likes, likes having him around. This is how he put it. My high school team was real, real stacked, you know, a lot of talent. I'm just used to being around players like that, where it's constantly, you watch them make a play, and it's like, okay, well, watch this. And that's what Pat does for me. You know, on a daily basis, we just kind of, you know, try to enjoy each other and, and push each other. And it is now third down and two. You gotta believe that's true. I mean, they like the competition, and they also give each other a rest. Fresh leg. That's a good defensive play by Matt Smith. He's been a steady fellow in the middle all season long in that linebacking core for Oregon, and he just shot the gap and came in and got him. And they'll have to punt. He's active. There's no question about it. He reads in a hurry, and uh, here he is right here. Now watch him just react. No false steps. He reads it, gets into the hole, chases it down, and uses the speed from behind. Boy, I'll tell you what. He's a smart guy. He's a leader. He's fast. He's a good linebacker. A little bit of pressure, but the kick is away, and a pretty good one. They let it bounce, and uh, the Beavers are going to be able to kick it and kill it deep at about the seven-yard line. So Oregon starts deep. Got to play a long field. Monday night on ABC, it's a must-win for the Washington Redskins against the St. Louis Rams. That'll be live at 9 Eastern time, 6 Pacific. And then Sunday night on ESPN, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. You've got the Jaguars and the Steelers. Rams get Falk back, and Trent Green, who made it look easy last week, comes up against his old teammate, the Washington Redskins. You know he's chopping at the bit. Jeff George gets the start again for the Redskins. Those Rams have got some so much speed. They've got some guys up there. Huh? From the seven-yard line, Oregon. Harrington going deep. Tucker. No. Put too long. It'll be second down and ten. Ricky Walker defending on the play. Ricky Walker is in there at cornerback right now in relief of Keith Hayward Johnson. For one thing, he may have a little better foot speed. And that may be why the change was made. Well, he got away from scientific plays and he went strictly with speed. That was just a, a streak from the word go. No route and ball going straight down the field as fast as he can and then try to get you the ball. Morris is the running back. Harrington's throwing. And that's incomplete. Intended again for Tucker. Terrence Carroll comes up hobbling, so they get him out of the ball game in a hurry, and they bring in Calvin Carlisle. Carlisle has a sprained foot. He did that against Cal. He was in a boot for 10 days. And now Carroll goes out hobbling, and here comes Carlisle. Well, that's the second time he's uh, hobbled off the field. I knew he was having some groin trouble, but that looks more like an ankle. Oregon State now starting to play a lot of zone. Third down and ten for the Ducks. Out of the end zone. To the sideline. To Howry. Complete and first down. And Howry with the reception. And Oregon, again, Oregon, down. Oregon State in a zone. And you let Howry, a guy who uh, earlier I said is a technician, I mean, he runs excellent routes. And, and he's precise. He'll find the open area of his zone. He just runs them off. You see Walker number four. Play soft in his zone, and Howard just cuts it off short and makes the catch and moves the chains. Out to the 22-yard line, pick up a 15 yards on the play. 3:05 to go in the third quarter, and a 16-point lead for Oregon State. Uh oh, he's got Tucker downfield. He had separated. He got away from Walker. The ball is a little too long, and Joey knows it. He had six points there, and he just couldn't hit him. Wow. This is one of those deals where, again, you've got Tucker who says, I've got the speed. If I'm even, I'm leaving. And he just ran by Walker, and then he knows he should have had it. Come on, Harrington's saying, I've got to put more air into the thing. I've got to give him a chance and make it catchable. Second and ten. Good 
This time he goes for Sammy Parker. And Parker makes the catch at the 34-yard line of Oregon State. They're picking on Walker. I have to tell you something. Sammy Parker makes a fantastic catch. This time, Harrington does make it a catchable ball. He puts it up, puts some air under it, and he says one of these guys is going to catch it. But look at the body control of Parker. He does a 360 in the air. What do they call that, a pirouette? Get bumped off the line. They're going to bump him, tug him, pull him, but he gets by. Now, look, complete spin in the air to make that catch, keep his feet inbound, and all the way down now to the 35-yard line. That's a 43-yard gain. The Ducks are in threatening position. Pitch to Morris. Morris hands the ball away to Parker. And Parker, who has hurt much of the season, will turn it back upfield for about three yards. Now, that's not going to work. The second time they've done that, they've, they're losing yardage on it. This defense is too fast for that. Also, it's a fairly disciplined defense, so a lot of guys stay home. They don't run out of their places. They know they've got the speed. Once the play breaks their way and they read it correctly, and that play's taken too I long thought it was interesting, Jim, when uh, Craig Gray said yesterday about uh, letting, letting the defensive people have some ownership of the system to go ahead and make some plays. That's a good theory. A lot of coaches do that. I know Jerry Claven used to do that at Maryland. Let them make their own call. Second down and seven. Harrington going down the middle with it. It's intercepted. Cookus again. That's three interceptions today. Jake Cookus with his third pick intended for Justin Field. Field was in between them. The ball was out in front of him. He couldn't reach it. And Cookus got it. He's playing free, Keith, and he's reading Harrington. And all day, Harrington's been going to the right, and he does again. And here he comes from the center field place, playing that free man, and all of a sudden he reads on the ball, breaks on the ball, and makes the interception his third of the day. But there you go again. All day, Harrington's been going to the right side. They read that, and the man free cook has picks it off. Well, the question now begins to loom. Is 23 points enough for Oregon State to win the game? Jonathan Smith hands it off to Ken Simonson. And he'll go from the 15, from the uh, uh, 13 up to about the 15. I asked Dennis uh, Erickson uh, yesterday in talking to him uh, what, where the strength, the basic strength of his football team was. And this is what he said. Our strength right now is our defense. And... Uh, the aggressiveness and speed that we have that, that really won some games for us when we weren't playing very well early. And uh, right now we're playing pretty well offensively, but d the defense is the strength of our football team. Well, they're showing it. Jonathan Smith's pass, strong arm, zipped it to Prescott. Prescott has been his primary receiver today because uh, he's, as Tim explained earlier, he's being the slot, he has more real estate to work around it. That was a good pass. Well, it is, and they give him so much room. Look at this. He is the inside guy, 82. Then he cuts in out underneath the flyer, and there's so much space there. I'll tell you this. Oregon has had great success this year defensively when the Ducks are able to put 8 and 9 in the box against the run and team tackle. But this Oregon State offense spreads them out and forces individuals to make plays, and they're having a tough time. Simonson with the ball, working his way in traffic, and he's out to about the 32-yard line. Prescott today, six catches, 109 yards, and two touchdowns. That's a big day. The wonderful world of Disney gets the holidays off to a whoopee whoopee start. Leslie Nielsen starring in Santa Who. Tomorrow at 7, 6 Central on ABC. Is it that time of the year already? Already. Oh, Lord. I'm going to go climb in the closet and try to forget. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Second down and eight now for the Beavers. Time it. I don't think there are too many guys wearing white with their eyes on Ken Simon today. He hasn't been able to do much as we come down toward the final second of the third quarter. Well, that was that same play they scored on. They ran the counter tray. This time, Morgan was ready for it. Well, they put that old counter play back in uh, at the beginning of the season, and it's been producing about five-plus yards per use during the season. 
We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this message and the word from our ABC station. Love college hoops? Live for the sweet slam dunks? Three-point plays? Get a ticket to basketball heaven. Order ESPN's pay-per-view full court, and you'll get over 450 extra games. The top schools, the biggest conferences, all the action you can handle. ESPN full court, maximum college basketball. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Now, Unitas winds up throwing the only touchdown pass in the game. It's a pass right off of Eddie Hinton's fingers. Winds up bouncing off of Mel Renfro's chest. Then John... Yeah, answer the question. Super Bowl five. Correct. Roll again. <laughs> I love this. Oh. Jimmy Smith and the Jaguars look to contain Jerome Bettis and put the brakes on the Steelers' drive to the postseason. The Jaguars face the Steelers at 8.30 on ESPN Sunday Night Football. It's football after dark. You better come to work. You drop a pass, you run a mile. Run every one you miss a block, uh -huh. you run a mile. Yeah. You fumble the football, and I will break my foot off in your... And then you will run a mile. We will be perfect. Show me, son! Perfection. Lose a game, they'll fire you. You must be outside your mind. I'm a winner. Victory! Show me, show me! I come to win. I go to win. Remember the Titans. Rated PG. Now playing. There's the only team where he dives to about the one. Yeah. It will be third down and goal to go. Now they have to be counting. By Bowman. Rashad Bowman. Out of nowhere to pick off Jonathan Smith, and all of a sudden the Oregon Ducks are. Again, in a threatening position. They said they wanted to stay away from Bowman, and this time Smith doesn't do it. They cost him. Here he is right here. Watch his read. He's looking at the quarterback, reading his eyes, breaking the football, making the interception. Had he kept his feet, it was a touchdown, and I know he's thinking that. He tripped over the carpet right there, and he wasn't able to keep his feet. But what a break on the ball. Great pick. And Smith, who said, we have to stay away from Bowman. We've got to locate him and go the other way. Didn't. He went right in his direction, and it cost him. Chad Johnson was the intended receiver. So here's Oregon at the Oregon State 30 now. Harrington. Ball is kicked at the line of scrimmage and falls incomplete. And he had Marshawn Tucker available. It is the best starting position of the entire ball game for the Oregon Ducks. The Beavers 30. Still plenty of time left. 14.51. They don't have to rush, but they do have to capitalize. Last time they were down this far, Harrington was picked off. Well, he's been picked three times today. Passing situation, though, second and long, and that's where Morris is most effective. Harrington's pass is away. LaCore Collins, tight end, makes the catch and goes to the one-yard line, first and goal, Oregon. Collins is a big target, but Harrington had to thread that. There was terrific coverage, a lot of black jerseys around. He put it right there where his guy could make the catch. They're still in a zone coverage. They've got two deep. Now watch this. He steps up, locates Collins. Now this ball is perfectly thrown. Look at all the black jerseys. They've got it bracketed, and still, it's right there where only his guy can make the catch. Perfectly thrown. First and goal. Deep man is Morris. He's got it. It's touchdown. Oregon. Purdue is waiting for an opponent in the Rose Bowl. Oregon is trying to provide that as they have scored their second touchdown of the day against the tough Beaver defense. And it looks like they might consider a two-point try. 
actually, if they make it 23-14, score a touchdown and a field goal, they can win it. Every coach in the country carries a card. It's broken down mathematically when to go for two, and this obviously is the time, as you just explained. Champions League history, Real Madrid have won a record seven times. The last taste of glory came in 1998 with a victory over Italy's Juventus. Now they enter as the Spanish Liga Primera runner-up team from last season, looking to add to their long list of honors. Follow the UEFA Champions League all season long on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. There's only one place to go for the most complete NFL pregame coverage anywhere. Join Chris. Oh my God, it might make it. He is being forced to live by a separate set of rules. More teams seem to get beat up there on that after Sterling. If they don't run the ball with commitment today, then this is who you are. And do it. It's about as black and blue as Berisha calls tight. Everything you need to know right up until kickoff from the guys who know it best. ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown. Sundays 11 Eastern on ESPN. Wait a second, wait a second. What are we doing here? Are we kidnapping the rival's mascot here? That's the kind of football spirit I like to see, but if you really want to show them, take a few of these mice I've dyed your school color. Drop a few of these babies in his costume and see how he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Still got it. all out that time too and he's just he's sort of a rangy guy sort of lopes under it and the first thing you know he's gone he's been pretty quiet today second down and 15 now Smith backs up in the shotgun, goes quickly to the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete in terms of the man for Usman Zada. Now we got a personal out. foul and Perhaps. a penalty flag. Might be a face net. But the referee threw it. Somebody hit somebody high. Fifteen yard penalty for the previous wow. spot. First down. That's the first down. Oh, helmet okay. to helmet. Yep. Golly. That's, That's uh, Callier. Collier. Number 56 and came in and popped it. Did you see? Oh, we had a ton of penalties, didn't we? Oregon has had 11 for 117 yards. And you had all the turnovers in there, and it's a, a nightmare. Ball is down at the 33-yard line. And it's the first down for Oregon State. And time is becoming an ally of the Beavers. And the ball to Simonton, and they're jumping a the yard short of the line of scrimmage. Here's Todd. Well, Keith, the defensive going just got a little tougher for the Oregon Ducks. They are out without the services of 35 Garrett Sable, one of their fastest linebackers. Ken Simonton loves that news, but for the Ducks, it's going to make it a little more difficult. Sprained left knee is the word on him. The trainer says he is done for the day. Not only done for the day, they just took him to the locker room. He just went over the hill, and I doubt if we'll see him again. They were practically carrying him over there. Smith comes up, changes his play, goes under center, right? and hands it off. And a penalty flag with hand. This one comes from the referee. 
and it's holding on Oregon State. It's been flag day in Corvallis. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet making a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Hear that old adage that a, an official could really throw a flag on every play if he wanted to. Seems like today they want to. Well, that's more than uh, 23 flags thrown over there. Yeah. Wow. Second down and 22, so that winds up about a 12-yard penalty. Spot down. Yeah, down the middle, it's caught by Maurer. Martin Maurer to tight end. Caught it twice, actually. First time bounced off his chest, and he got it on the rebound. And it's first down for Oregon State. He caught it twice, and the second catch got it the first. What, play action, freezes everybody, holds him up. Here comes Maurer making his fourth catch this half, his fifth of the game. And the way he stands up and lunges forward is just enough for the first. Puts the ball down on the Oregon 22-yard line with 11 and a half minutes to go in the game. Oregon State, and to add to their point total, they lead by 10. Here's Simonton, and he's scoring. Loss is back around the 14-yard line, a couple of yards. So it'll be second down and 12 coming up. Dell Game Solutions, I'll tell you a little secret about Oregon State. Beavers run only about five run plays. It's simple, but they let the backs work, and out of that, they've gotten 117 yards. Oregon with 127, but again, they've got all the penalties, and they've got those three turnovers. Second and 12 at the 24. They give him the catch right at the 20 yard line. Not much of a play, the ball is tipped. Oregon State now just eating up the clock, melting it down to 10 and a half minutes. You just saw the 117 yards rushing. 102 of those came in this half. So that's what's been able to melt the clock, shorten the game. This ball tipped right at the line of scrimmage. Oh, you, think, and you think it's going to be an incompletion, and he just doesn't give up on it. Continues to concentrate on it, make a diving catch, and picks up three or four yards. Matt Smith, the fellow that got his hand on it. Third down and seven. Coming right at you. Smith now throws incomplete. Usman Zada again, the intended receiver. He's looking for some help from the officials, but Steve Smith sat the ball away in complete. Now Ryan Seska gets the call. He would feel pretty good if he could make this one. Well, if he makes this one, then Oregon knows they need two touchdowns instead of just a touchdown and a field goal. This extra point looming in the whole structure of things. This is a 36-yard field goal run. Only a leg. Just missed it. Wow. He had hit what? He had uh, 13 of 15 coming into this ball game. He's missed an extra point. Now he has missed the field goal front. Introducing ESPN Extra, the brand new cable channel for sports fans who can't get enough. On ESPN Extra, you get more of the sports you love, like international soccer from around the world, including the UEFA Champions League. You'll see international auto racing, fitness, and outdoor programming. Plus, there's EXPN, which offers exciting extreme sports programming. It's all on pay-per-view, around the clock, all week long, and only on cable. Watch ESPN Now or your program guide to see what's on. Then order exactly like you would for a pay-per-view movie. ESPN Extra, you can't do better than that.
we've got a few questions for you. Has free agency crushed baseball? Where have all those great post-war boxing rivalries gone? Does the Babe make it to the Hall of Fame as a pitcher? Old school reporters like Dirk Gowdy, Jerry Eisenberg, and Robert Lipside ponder questions like these every Monday with host Jeremy Schapp on Classic Sports Reporters. The provocative new show from ESPN Classic. Three reporters, their anecdotes, memories, opinions, and perspective on the games as they were and as they have become. Classic Sports Reporters, every Monday at 7, only on ESPN Classic. Blitz will be coming from. Remember, he is just a red shirt freshman. Quarterbacks again the story. And it is Matt Kegel for Washington State who might become the new Prince of the Palouse. And the kid for Washington, the Pac 10's possible MVP, Marcus Tui Asasopo. playing both these teams and both these quarterbacks will go after you. They go to the deep stuff in an eye blink. Because both teams are playing a lot of man. Oregon State has dropped into more zone in the second half of play. They lead by 10 points. Harrington pulls out and takes up. And slides in. He's asking the official, when I slide, am I still supposed to get hit? He got a knee right to the choppers. Watch the end of this play. He goes, he's going to give up here. He's going to give himself up and slide, but still gets hit when he goes down. Boom, right there. He gets the knee to the helmet. Well, it was not an, an accomplished slide. Allen was, was on him at the time he was going down. Third down and two for Oregon. This might be a very big play. You know, they just before to play in the ball game. Harrington trying to pick it up on his own and does. That'll be a first down as he gets out to the 32-yard line. Ladarius Jackson brought him down. He what? did all that on his own, Keith, because yeah. it was supposed to be an option to take it around the, the outside for him to cut back an extremely dangerous play to cut back into pursuit but he does he gets a good key zone block there a cutoff block by 62 jeff austin is a terrific story himself but they pick up the first down austin will walk on undersized done a great job there Oops. being a beaver to a duck last week against california harrington passed for one touchdown and ran to two and he's winning pressure coming i mean he took a lick Whoa. There's a flag in the secondary. James Allen was the one who came in on Harrington and just ripped him as he delivered the ball. And it was nowhere near the intended receiver. Well, see, that's what got me. I didn't think the ball was catchable because he was hit as he threw it. And it was just a dead duck that just kind of floated out into the flat. Wasn't anybody near the ball when it came down. Prior to the ball being held, thrown, holding downfield on an eligible receiver defense, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Unusual call, but it must have been a bugging. Again, they've been bumping and grinding all day. As soon as Tucker gets away, you can see he pulled his jersey once before he breaks away. Here's the lick laid on Harrington. He's a tough kid, though, isn't he? Josh Lyon sort of cushioned him on that ball as he was knocked back into Josh. Harrington is a great competitor, a winner, having a super year, but he really needs to get things going here in a hurry with 824 left. It's first down at the 41-yard line. 
Passes away down the middle of the field to Tucker. Tucker's got a big play at the 31 yard line. Brought down by Dennis Weatherby. Dennis Weathersby, the corner. Cracked him down, but move your change. Here comes Oregon again, knocking on the door. He started all the way on the other side of the field. He is way up here at the top of your screen, right on the numbers. Now watch, he'll drag all the way across the middle. They're in a zone coverage, and again, he finds the open area in the zone. They just want to thin things out, get, his, get him one-on-one -on -one with the defender, and let him run, and that's what happened. At the 32-yard line of Oregon State, Bucks trailing by 10, and to come back. Play action, Harrington. Penalty flag as he goes to the deep corner. And uh, let's see about the flag. Carlisle defending Collins on the play, and that's where your flag, your foul occurred. So it's going to be involving those two players. Remember now, Carlisle came in to replace Terrence Carroll, who went out. Prior to the ball being thrown, holding downfield on a receiver defense. And both teams now are over 100 yards in penalties. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Dennis Erickson is furious. And I'll tell you why, because that's an unusual call. Normally they won't call pass interference. The ball's in the air. So what they're doing is they're just calling defensive holding before the ball's called Called it twice in this possession. under pressure. Throws incomplete. The man who was after him tracking him was Darnell Robinson. He was trying to set up a screen on this side of the field for Amundsen looked like. Had no chance. Purdue is out big over Indiana. 41-13 I understand. So that would uh, seem to tell you that Purdue is going to get the trip to Pasadena from the Big Ten and Oregon is trying to stage a comeback here in the late going against Oregon State. They trail by 10 points. If Oregon can win this ball game, they go to the Rose Bowl. They'll be undefeated in the conference and can win on the season. Neither one of these teams has ever won 10 games in a season. Neither one. Harrington from the back side brought down. The suit, DeLorence Grant. Defensive end. That's how quick those guys are. Sets up a third down and long, and I don't think they faced a third down with this importance all year. They need a touchdown and a field goal, so if they don't get the first here, they'll take the field goal here, and it'll leave them plenty of time to get the touchdown later. Third and eight from the 20. To the end zone. No. And Penalty another flag. flag in the another flag thrown in the secondary. It was man coverage. They were bumping again. They were playing a bump and run. in this possession. Defensive holding on the secondary all three times. Here's your guy right here. Watch him bump and grind. All right, there's the left hand, the right hand. He gets hit. Boy, I don't know. I, I mean, they're, they're just calling defensive holding, and the guys are bumping like they're supposed to. It's, a, it's an old bump and run tactic, and they're throwing flags on it. He didn't grab any jersey or anything. It's a first down for Oregon at the Oregon State 10. Give it to Morris. Down at the line of scrimmage. James Allen, number 34, was the man that finished him off. If you're not allowed to bump a receiver around when that ball's in the air, but until that ball's in the air, you've got to be able to put your hands on him. You've got to be able to bump him, or you're giving them too big of an advantage. Well, and they're saying he's not bumping, he's holding. Well, I didn't see anybody any grabbing <laughs> in that last one. <laughs> Over 
100 yards in Kennedy. He's too credit. Harrington hit from behind, fumbles the football. Beavers pick it up. Sefa O'Reilly hit him in the back, knocked the ball out. And Dolores Grant almost got away with it and went the other way. So it's the Oregon State defense that just refuses to yield. That is the fifth turnover. There have been four interceptions of Joey Harrington and the fumble. Talk about great team speed. He never saw him coming backside. O'Reilly just knocked it loose. Grant picks it up. And Oregon State has the football. And perhaps the game. This Sunday, ESPN Classic presents a real classic that saturates the screen with sweat. Woody Hayes, Ohio State football coach. Get off the field. A real-life documentary that will tackle your senses. Go deep into the life of this legendary coach. Come on, come on. And find out where the mystery meets the man. It's real classics. It's Woody Hayes, Ohio State. Backers, James Price, very strong. His nickname is Chaos. He has 71 tackles this year. And the DB's Billy Newman is their best with 237 career tackles. Right here, Marcus Tuiasasopo checking at the line of scrimmage. Has a new look from the Cougars. Blitz. Tuiasasopo fumbles, but he gathers it himself. Randall Smith. They gave him a new look, Steve. Bill Nova, the defensive coordinator, watch Randall Smith. He comes off the edge, unblocked, and hammers Tui Asasopo. The ball comes out, but Tui able to recover his own fumble. You see just a crushing blow right there. Sopo option. Clemen! Braxton very close to a first down. Newman knocked him out or Clemen would have scored. 14 yards and the first down. Defense is done. Last year they had uh, 100 and, what was it, 146 yards in penalties against Oregon. And they're at 122 now. And perhaps 20. Patrick McCall carries on that play, and Patrick will pick up about four yards. It is so tough to overcome turnovers. When you put that ball on the ground and give it to the other team, it's just really tough to win. And Cook is with three interceptions today, and then, of course, O'Neal with that big hit in the backside. Force of the fumble on Harrington, just huge. It would appear that Purdue's on their way to Pasadena. Bob Greasy would probably be looking for the back bedroom. <laughs> Second down and six. Jonathan Smith. A lot of wide open space in front of him. Wraps both arms around the ball. And the quarterback who doesn't like to run, can't run very fast, picks up a big play there and a first down for the Oregon State Beaver. It's the second season of Dennis Erickson coming down from the Seattle Seahawks. That's a 20-yard pickup by Smith. And he praises Jonathan Smith widely because he thinks he's like a coach on the field. Dennis Erickson's been successful everywhere he's been. Look at this, Keith. Except for an unhappy four years with the Seattle Seahawks. 28 straight losing seasons here yep. before he arrived. Yep. You talk about turning a program around. Some people would say that's impossible. Well, he's doing failure. it, too, with a lot of players that Mike Riley brought here, including Simon and, and players of that quality. But he's got, uh, he's got some coming on his own because he's always been known as a good recruiter. But you have to imagine if he's had that success his first two years, what that will do. He's laying the foundation for the future, obviously. It'll just make it easier. Yep. It's first down from the 47-yard line. Smith turns, hands off to McCall. 
And McCall, and McCall right about the line of scrimmage. I asked him yesterday, talking to him, if he's happy coming back to college football and, and living in Corvallis, Oregon. He said this. So it's been a lot of fun for me after the four years in the National Football League, which uh, I'd like to forget, but I was in that league for four years, and it's not a very much NFL stands for not much fun, I don't think, but uh, uh, I've had a lot of fun, and, and working with these kids, uh, I forgot what it was all about and how great college football is. Well, I've known them all along the way to Montana State, to Idaho, to Washington State, to Wyoming, and Miami. Balls in the air with a lot of air on it for Hushmanzada, and he makes a fantastic play. But they're saying the ball came out. It is incomplete. An official threw a flag right at the point. I don't know that the flag means anything. They've picked it up, or have they? No, they have picked it up. Defense, 15 yards to the previous spot. First down. Steve Smith is the man defending on the play, and he's squawking about it. Well, he ought to. These are two very aggressive defenses. All year long, the corners have really liked to bump and run. They've got great confidence in doing that, and they like to take risks. Steve Smith was riding Hushmanzada all the way down the field, and they threw the flag. Story on Bowman, uh, Todd. Well, Keith, he came out, and he's got a bruised tendon in his right knee. After the uh, field goal attempt by Oregon State, they put heat on it, they put salve on it, they're trying to heat it up, but he's got a definite limp, and as soon as that play happened, the coach grabbed him and said, you're back in. First down after the penalty, and the ball is down at the Oregon 33. Smith hands it off. The call trying to get to the outside. Can't do it. Gain is a couple of three yards on the play. Yesterday, talking to the coaches, they said run running game was the key and certainly has been in the second half for Oregon State. Monday night must win. Washington, St. Louis. And it won't be easy for the Redskins because of the speed of the St. Louis Rams. That'll be at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 Pacific on ABC's Monday Night Football. You got a timeout call by Oregon. They've got one left at 348 to play in the game. Score is 23-13. Oregon State leading. Come on, Timmy, just go over there and ask her. Are you kidding me? I can't. Yes, you can. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 Live for the sweet slam dunks, three-point plays, get a ticket to basketball heaven. Order ESPN's pay-per-view full court, and you'll get over 450 extra games. The top school, the biggest conferences, all the action you can handle. ESPN's full court, maximum college basketball. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. this month on ESPN Extra. Well, rest just short of the 35-yard line on the Oregon side of the field. Second down and eight for Oregon State. Three minutes and 48 seconds to play in the ball game. And a 10-point lead for the Beavers. Top of the picture. Three wide outs up there. And Smith looking for one of them. Down the middle he goes, and it's a good defensive play by Steve Smith. Pushmanzada was there. Ball was a little behind him. And in looking and studying before this ball game, watching Jonathan Smith, I would say, Tim, that 
when he misses a pass, he almost always misses it short on the short side. He sure does. And, and that play right there, though, you can't hang that one on, on Jonathan Smith. No, no, You've got to give no. Steve Smith a big, big pat on the back. That was a big-time play. This defense lost eight starters from last year's team and then reloaded. Had a better year this year. Defensive line and safety is a big question. They stepped up for Smith in big time. Purdue has uh, won. Purdue has won their ball game against Indiana, so they're on their way to Pasadena representing the Big Ten on New Year's Day. Washington has taken a 6-0 lead over Washington State over in Pullman. Well, we understand it was very cold last night. It is now fourth down and four yards to go for Oregon State. Three minutes and 14 seconds. Clock running. Oregon has only one timeout remaining. Seconds ticking away and dreams going with them for a lot of these Oregon players. Oregon State used every second of the play clock before they called that, that timeout. You got Florida, Florida State coming up tonight here on ABC Sports, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. That's a big ball game for a lot of reasons. Uh, both those teams figure they're still in the hunt for the national title game. And it's a, it's a rivalry that's, that rattles the China no matter what's at stake because they ain't too fun to each other this time of the year. Yeah, Tallahassee's been the focal point of uh, the country all the last couple of weeks, and certainly tonight all eyes will be firmly focused on the stadium there in Tallahassee, Florida State, Florida, year in and year out. Close game. Average of less than two points in the last ten of them. Bobby Bowden, Steve Spurrier, always fun to watch two very innovative, offensive-minded coaches play against each other. Has Steve made up his mind who's going to quarterback tonight? I said they're both going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby doesn't have that kind of a problem. No, but he does have a problem because Winky spent the night in the hospital with the flu. flu yeah. All right. We're going to give uh, Seska another chance here at a field goal. Nope, we're not. It's fourth and four. They're going for it. They're trying to give him a hard count, get him to jump. They wouldn't do it. And Ronnie called timeout. Trying so, to use every second on that play clock, which he did again until yep. it was one. They called the timeout. Oregon State has just spent their last timeout. Oregon has one remaining. Total time. 2.56 to play in the ball game. The Oregon Ducks now. It's looking pretty dark for them. We know that leaders are not born. Leaders are made. And you are already a leader if you're here and you have the potential for being even a better leader. You have the power to create positive change. You should relish the fact that you can make a positive impact. We have a We are We are Fourth and four for Oregon State. You see that bright yellow line? That's where they've got to go to get their first down. They obviously don't want to try a field goal. They want to use as much time as they can possibly take off that clock before they give them an opportunity. The first and ten presented by Quest during today's second half. Dennis Erickson and Jonathan Smith have done a marvelous job melting that clock, using every possible second. Well, they put the punter in now, Mike Fester, so he's going to try to pooch it down there and kill it deep and give Oregon the longest possible field they can for their possession. No point in kicking the ball in the end zone. Here you just want to pooch it a little bit, let it roll around. And he's done just exactly that. Now he's got to catch it, guys. And they do at the three-yard line. So that works to perfection. As they put the catch, executive producer ABC's College Football, John Filippelli, director of production Bob Toms, coordinating producer Bob Goodrich, 
The guys out here in Oregon with us, our producer Mark Loomis, our director Patrick McManus, our technical director John Zippe. Now here come the Oregon Ducks. First down at their own three-yard line. Out of the end zone, Joey Harrington lets it go, and it bounces incomplete. Well, it was one man going downfield, and that was uh, Marshawn Tucker, and the ball wasn't anywhere near him. Incomplete well, forward pass. If this score holds up, I guarantee you they're going to burn out the television sets around Corvallis watching Washington, Washington <laughs> State to see what shakes out. That's right. Our technical director today, John Zippe, the uh, associate producer, Derek Mobley, associate director, Jeff Kibler, production manager, Joe Alvarado, technical manager, Dennis Zabel. Second down and 10 from their own three-yard line for the Oregon Ducks. And the pass is away into this pick by Howry. Keenan Howry is taken down at the five-yard line. That's a pickup of two yards. It'll be third down and eight. Assistance to the producer, Jason Shaviko, Tom Wicks, our statistician, Mark Amito, our spotter, Kelly Hayes, and computer staff, Brian Sorota. Harrington lets it go. Oh, got it. Sammy Parker makes the catch up on the 22-yard line for a first down. You talk about taking it to the brink. He was third and eight, and he hit him. Duck still have life. Dragged him all the way across. Again, great body control to get the feet down and get control of the ball. So they move the chains. They get it up past the 20. Now they've got a little bit more room to work. Again, you got your speed guys. You got Willis. You got Parker. You got Tucker. You got Howie in the ball game. First down and 10, 2 minutes, 11 seconds to play in the game. Harrington's pass, incomplete. Intended for Jason Willis. And very good coverage for Oregon State. Jake Cookus and Calvin Carlisle are the people who've been doing the heavy work in the secondary with the last few minutes. And it was Carlisle on that play, playing with a sprained foot. Mike Bellotti, his assistant, trying to find something. His offensive coordinator, Jeff Petrick, trying to find a way to break him loose. Find the magic play. Harrington to the sidelines again. Good. It is caught by Sammy Parker. A penalty flag is thrown. It's on this side of the field. The play went to the other side of the field. Washington up 6-0 over Washington State early. Cougars uh, losing their quarterback to a broken leg, Jason Gesser. But the redshirt freshman Kegel played quite well last week in relief. Dead ball after the play. Illegal blow to the head. Defense. 15 yards penalty. Wow. First Ducks down. looking for anything they can get here. That moves it down to almost midfield. That's a silly play. That's a silly foul. 15 yards, and now Oregon's out there in the middle of the field. There are your penalties on the day. 13 for Oregon State, 137 yards, and 12 for Oregon, 132 yards. 269 yards in one game. Wow. 39-yard line now as Harrington rolls out, gets some time to throw. Goes to the picture. It's picked off. Intercepted by Dolores Grant. One time too many to the same place, and that is the fifth interception of the day for Joey Harrington. Grant and Jackson have played well the entire game. They were in a zone. Actually, it was a zone blitz where the defensive end actually comes back and falls off. Watch this. Comes up, hits, drops back. Looks for help, and you talk about a big mitt. He just pulled it in one-handed. <laughs> so I go back to my original statement. You're in the Civil War. You got defensive ends named Grant and Jackson, and they made the difference. Yes, sir. So, Oregon State with a ball. And uh, they will share, it appears, the back 10 ground with Oregon and perhaps Washington. Now we're off to New York and John Saunders. Well, Keith, the two teams you're watching right now will be interested in this. That's Joe Tiller getting a shower from the Gatorade bucket. 
It's their first Rose Bowl for Purdue since the 66th season. Drew Brees has taken them there. Now, of course, this is live shot right now. The roses being handed to Joe Tiller and the elation, the celebration on the field was tremendous as they knocked off Indiana 41 to 13 was the final. Who will they face? Will it be Oregon, Oregon State, or Washington? Right now, by the way, Keith Washington is leading their game with Washington State. Six to nothing is the score there. So at least early, things aren't working out for the Beavers, although it's working out nicely on the field against Oregon. Keith, that's the story. Purdue champions headed to the Rose Bowl. If it winds up in a three-way tie, then the Washington Huskies on the tiebreakers will go to the Rose Bowl. He and put the reason for that is the simple fact that uh, Washington beat Oregon State in Seattle. What's amazing to me is that Oregon now will, with a loss today, won't go to the Rose Bowl, but may drop all the way back to a Christmas Day Bowl and go to the Aloha. It could be. It could be. The only loss they had this season was in Seattle to the Washington Huskies, when the Huskies seemed that they, they were in control as Tui Asasopo scored a touchdown in the fourth quarter to put them ahead by 10, and then Jonathan Smith put them back in the ball game, and the Beavers missed on this field goal try that much. That was the difference in the ball game, 33 to 30. This is one fine Oregon State team, though, I'll tell you, with a great deal of speed. They won't give anybody fits. Now they've been rolling in the second half of the season. This is Simonton getting around the corner. And Simonton will pick up a first down for Oregon State, and that should just about do it. The Chevy players of the ball game for Oregon, Maurice Morris had 19 carries, 97 yards, playing sore, scored a touchdown. For Oregon State, Jake Cookus had three interceptions and a tackle for a loss. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet makes a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Our thanks to all the folks here in Corvallis, Oregon for making this the most pleasant visit. Our talent is usually an old friend who we've known forever today, saw D'Andro today, saw a lot of people that I haven't seen in a long time. And for those of you who've been out in this part of the country, and uh, who have become familiar with the famous Rip City cry of Bill Shunley across the years. I saw him today, and he looks terrific. Keith Ken Simonton, who had eight carries for 10 yards in the first half, now over 100 yards for the ball game. It is the first 10-win season ever in Oregon State football history. First time ever. And this series is, is the sixth longest running 104th meeting. So they've been playing football out here a long time, but this is their most successful season ever. The 962nd game in school history. And now the students are starting to come out of the stands and spill down onto the area right behind the Oregon State bench. That's dangerous. And uh, they've got 350, 350 security people are going to try to control the circumstances. But our congratulations to Dennis Erickson and his staff. The only sad note to me is that an old friend, Bruce Snyder, lost his job at Arizona State this week. I'm sorry to see that. 23 to 13. And this will be your final snap. That's it. Oregon State will run out the clock. And now here come the students racing out into the stadium. And they have just swallowed the field. But uh, Oregon players are proceeding off in a seemingly orderly manner, and uh, I don't see any, any sign of any trouble. It's almost impossible for 350 security people to utterly control the students as they came pouring down out of the stand. But let's hope that we get through this uh, without uh, anything happening. 1998, they had some uh, a little bit of trouble that uh, bothered some people. But uh, the Oregon football team seems to be making its way along the edge of the crowd and out of the stadium. So it is a festive ending here in Corvallis, Oregon, for the Oregon State Beavers as they go 10 and 1 for a historic moment in their football history. Okay, ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC College Football. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. Coming up at 8, 
5 Pacific, the Florida Gators, and the Florida State Seminoles here on ABC Sports. Bugs Life, rated...